In today's episode, you'll learn how to make a delicious kosher veal shank osobuco using our Prairie Street Primes veal shanks and these fresh ingredients. This piece right here is calling my name. This is delicious, guys. Oh my gosh. Welcome to Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen. I'm your guest chef, Chef D. Arthur, and I'm so excited to be here today. A little bit about me, I've been doing the chef work for about 10 years now all across the country. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, but pretty much if you need food anywhere in the world, I'm your guy. I started off working for varying NBA players for different teams, and now I'm just taking care of my clients wherever they need my services. I've even cooked for a few entertainers like Anita Baker, for example. Um, most notably and most recently, I was on an episode of Chopped where I didn't win, but I should have. Don't tell anybody that. All right, so today we are making one of my favorite dishes, Prairie Street Prime's Veal Asabuco. So, a little bit about Veal Asabuco. Asabuco is more of a cooking process. It is traditionally veal shank cooked with white wine and vegetables, but we're gonna remix that a little bit today with red wine instead. I choose red wine because it's bolder flavor, I love the color of it, and it's just more potent for me. I'm also using curry paste. Sometimes people put a little tomato paste in there, but I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and use some curry paste. You wanna see my secrets? Let's go. I'm gonna start with my carrot, my onion, and my tomatoes here. Let's get those nice and chopped up. Just cut that into smaller chunks. Now for the sake of this recipe, I'm gonna dice it to make it nice and pretty and uniform, but if you want nice hearty chunks, you go for it. So today I'm really excited to be making veal for you. Veal can be an intimidating cut of meat if you're not used to it, but I wanna show you how easy and user-friendly it is to make. Okay, we got our carrot cut chopped up here. We're gonna go with our onion next, give that a nice dice. I'm only gonna saute my vegetables up for a little bit when it's time to do so because I don't wanna caramelize these vegetables because that's gonna give it a different flavor. I want it to be nice, bold vegetable flavors, nice, bold onion, nice, bold carrot, nice, bold garlic. I want that freshness to shine through, all right? So we're gonna put that to the side and now we're gonna chop up two Roma tomatoes. This is traditionally an Italian dish that you might see served with polenta or over risotto. But today we're gonna serve it by itself, but we're gonna still use this Roma tomato as our diced tomato. Some people might just use the can of diced tomatoes. If you wanna do that, that's fine, but I want the freshness of a Roma tomato specifically. It's gonna help build so much flavor in my sauce. And it's just kinda of keeping true to the Italian tradition, or that Italian flavor profile, I should say. So next we're gonna move on to our osobuco. We have two cuts here, they look amazing. As you can see, they both have the bone censored. That bone marrow is gonna bring out so much flavor when we start cooking. You see a little bit of marble in the meat, but for the most part, we wanna keep the meat attached to the bone because we want all of that flavor to shine through when we're cooking, right? So, first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this meat stays on the bone. And we're gonna do that by tying it with some twine here, all right? So I'm gonna take my first cut I'm gonna take my twine, get my meat nice and tight, and tie it up. And once you got it nice and tied, you can cut it off. Cut off that excess string. So next we're gonna move on to our second piece of veal here. I'm using butcher twine. It's often used to tie meats that you want to stay together. Oftentimes for the final presentation's sake, we want it to look really, really pretty for that final product. So we tie it up so it can stay intact. And so we're using the butcher twine to do that. I'm using just a regular knot, just like you're tying your shoe if you want to. Nothing too special there. But we want to make sure it's nice and tight because we want this meat to stay on the bone. If you don't tie this up, you'll have meat floating all around the pot. It'll still be delicious, but presentation, it's better on the bone, and you want it to stay attached to that marrow. The next thing I wanna do is season both sides liberally with salt and pepper, all right? So we're going salt, pepper. Let's flip that over. Same thing on the other side. Salt, and you wanna be liberal with the salt here. Don't be stingy, flavor matters. Pepper. So I got both sides nice and tied up. 
nice and salt and peppered. And so my next step is we want to put both sides of our veal in flour. The reason we're doing that is because it's going to thicken up our sauce one when we're starting to cook and we pan sear this as we cook and we add the liquid to it and we add our red wine and we add our garlic and all that kind of stuff it's all going to kind of thicken up the sauce it's going to thicken up the wine it's going to thicken up the broth and it's going to give it a nice body all right so i have my oven preheated to 325 degrees i have my dutch oven on medium heat i'm adding about two tablespoons of olive oil to that now and so we're only gonna let this sit for about two to three minutes on each side. We just want it to get nice and brown. Because there's flour on this, if you overdo it, it'll burn and it'll really affect the taste of your sauce. We wanna get a nice crisp, a nice char, a nice brownness with that flour, and then we're gonna flip it over and do it on the other side. So make sure that I give it a nice flip. There we go. Boom. You see that color? Do you see that color? Nice, beautiful color, boom. Both of them are nice and golden brown there. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit more oil. I'm gonna cut my heat down to medium. Also gonna add just a little bit of butter there. And in goes my onions and carrots. Boom. And I know sometimes you might see these little pieces here at the bottom that look like they're burnt. No, don't be scared of those. That's just flavor. Make sure that you're getting that, stir, trying to stir all of that in to your vegetables here. So our vegetables are nice and tender. We've been going for a little while here now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add our curry paste. And I'm gonna go, I don't know, maybe about one tablespoon is enough for this. The reason why I'm not, I don't want to add too much curry paste is because I already have the flour on the outside of the veal that's going to help thicken my sauce. This curry paste is also going to help thicken my sauce. So we don't want it to be too, 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 too thick. So I'm not going to go too heavy. I'm mixing this curry paste in with my vegetables. I'm going to get nice and incorporated. Okay. Next thing I'm going to add is my garlic here. Some people actually chop up the garlic that mints the garlic. If you want to do that, it will still be great. But I like when I'm braising things, particularly, particularly in a lot of liquid, I love to leave my garlic whole. I just think it brings out more flavor. I love that a lot of times when you do that and you're cooking it low and slow for a long time, by the time it's done, you can't even see the garlic in it anymore because it just infused into the sauce so well. That's what you want. You're building flavor, all right? Now it's time to deglaze your pan. And we're going to do that with some kosher red wine here. All right. So I'm going to go with about a cup of this red wine. Look at this color. It's already turned into the color I needed to turn into. That's good for my wine. Let's get this out of the way here. Give that a second on its own before we add the beef stock. I want to let that wine cook out just a little bit and get connected with our vegetables here. And so next, I'm gonna go with about two cups of beef stock. So we're gonna give that a stir. Let it come to a nice simmer. So the next thing I wanna do is take this time to salt and pepper the sauce itself. Um, again, when you have such an amazing cut of meat, you don't need a lot going on. So all, of this, all this sauce needs itself, just like the meat salt and pepper, but you want to salt it liberally because again, if you don't need a lot, you want what you are using to make a statement. So salt, a little black pepper, tomato, let's give it a nice stir. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add our veal back. All right. So one, piece goes in there, second piece goes in there. So I have everything in my Dutch oven. I'm just going to add a little bit of sauce here to the top of my veal so that the flavor is getting in there. All right. Now I'm going to add my lid back to it. My oven's been going on 325 degrees. I'm just going to toss this in there. I'm going to cook it for one hour. Then I'm going to flip the meat over and cook it for one more hour and we'll be ready to eat. 
All right, it's the moment we've all been waiting for, the big deal reveal. Let's get it. Oh my God, it smells so good. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, wow. And so now let's plate this up. I'm so excited. Wow, look at this. I'm gonna start with just a little sauce on the plate there for my base. All right. I'm gonna go for this big piece, yeah. Boom, oh yeah. Right there in the center. Boom. All right. We have some fresh cilantro that we were going to garnish with. Right on the top like that. Let's just put a few pieces around. Give this a little personality and some color. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Prairie Street Prime's Asobuco. It's delicious, it's tender, it's veal, it's such quality meat, it's amazing. I can't wait to try it. I'm sure you're at home, you can't wait to dig in. Let's get to it. I'm so excited, this looks so delicious, it smells amazing, and I finally get to eat it. So, let's dig in. All right, this piece right here is calling my name. Let's sop it up. Get all of this sauce on there, yeah, 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 yeah. The moment of truth. It's so good. No, it's literally so good. You guys have to check this recipe out at home. Everything's amazing. This is delicious, guys. Oh my gosh. Coming up next on the Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen channel, you'll learn how to make a delicious kosher cowboy ribeye steak. Wow, how great does that look? Perfect medium rare. Whoa. <laughs> that is a piece of meat. <laughs> if you want to experience what I'm experiencing right now, such amazing flavor, such amazing marble, such a high quality cut of meat, go over to prairiestreetprime.com right now. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and share. And if you'd like to stay abreast of our weekly content, please click the notification bell to become a part of our culinary community.